Hello friend, this is Ellen Glow from IHAP.com. I am so happy you decided to join me. Today we have another bookish adventure. Books with a strong female lead. Are you excited? Let's go! My mission is to find books to elevate the mind, move the heart, delight the senses, and uplift the soul, and then share all my findings with you. To all of you strong women, boss ladies, women that know their mind and go after the things that you most desire, these are the books for you. All of us sometimes need an, something to uplift us, something to give us that extra energy. And these books with the characters that are in them can help us give us a boost. So let's start with Wild Swans by Zhang Chan. And this is a book that takes us to China. It, it tells the story of three generations of women. So it starts with Imperial China with the grandmother, and then the daughter is living through the communist revolution. And then the daughter is dealing with the aftermath. And this book is a sweeping adventure. It is uh, very descriptive. There are certain parts where she describes the embroidery on the dress and describes the shoes and describes the interactions between the people. It, I felt, as I read it, I felt as if I was living through all these different times, experiencing all these events. It's a truly fantastic, wonderful book. And as a result of reading it, I felt like as if I was receiving an education on the mis on the modern history of China. So very much a book worth reading. Next, I'm going to suggest Unless by Carol Shields. Unless is the story of a mother whose daughter goes missing and later she finds her sitting on a street corner with a sign around her neck and uh, this makes the lead character uh, doubt herself and uh, doubt everything she has done in her life. She doesn't understand why her daughter is behaving in this particular way and all this is very painful to her, to everybody in her family, her husband, her other uh, daughters and so it's a story of a mother having to come to terms with some of the uncontrollable things that happens to one of her children. Next, a beautiful, beautiful poetic novel called The Diviners by Margaret Lawrence. And with Margaret Lawrence, you can never go wrong. You can read anything she's ever written and absolutely love it. Now, in The Diviners, we have a main character who is constantly uh, defying social conventions and time and again she pays the price for being a strong woman uh, and yet she is never defeated something inside her keeps her uh, certain of what she wants is she her soul never breaks and so it's a beautiful novel about how a strong woman can survive despite many disappointments. Next, I want to talk about Heartburn by Nora Ephron. Yes, Nora Ephron, who is famous for movies such as When Harry Met Sally or You've Got Mail or Sleepless in Seattle. Well, before she wrote and was involved in this movie, she wrote a book. And it was a fictionalized uh, depiction of uh, events that happened in her life. So Nora Ephron went through a horrible, heartbreaking divorce, and then she wrote a hilarious novel about all the events that happened in her life. So it's about a woman who has a child, is pregnant with a second child, and suddenly she discovers that her husband is having an affair and her husband tells her that she, he's in love with another woman. So it's about the 
crazy events that she has to go through to try to reconcile with with his decision. And it's written in a absolutely funny and hilarious way, as you would expect Nora Ephron to do. You know, uh, only Nora Ephron can make a divorce and heartbreak sound funny, but in this book she really does manage it. And uh, uh, the reason I appreciate this novel, it's about how, you know, the absolutely worst thing you can imagine can happen, and yet you can get through it and find a way to uh, live with with, live with all these events. The next book is State of Wonder by Anne Patchett. And State of Wonder tells the story of a woman who works for a pharmaceutical company and uh, as a result of her work, she has to go to the Amazon forest. And upon arriving there, all sorts of things go wrong. She loses her cell phone. At one point, she loses her clothes and her shoes. She's in the forest, uh, nature is uh, taking over, uh, wildlife is threatening her life. She comes into contact with some of the indigenous tribes that are, that have never had the uh, interaction with the outside world. And she has to manage all these unfathomable and difficult situations and through this adventure, she begins to reconstruct her whole life and, and emerges out of it as a completely different person. It's a wondrous, beautiful, sweeping novel that I highly, highly recommend. Now for the plus one on the list, and I'm going to be talking about the novel Graffiti Hack that I wrote. Graffiti Hack is a novel uh, about a woman who is graffitiing the internet. She it decides that she wants to feminize the internet. The internet was invented mostly by men, for men. And so she decides she wants to put a womanly touches on it. And the way I describe it to people is that it's as if Banksy was a woman who wants to graffiti the internet. And now we're going to be talking about a novel called The First Bad Man by Miranda July. Now, I was first introduced to Miranda July through her movies. She makes these very indie, peculiar, art house, metaphorical movies that are sometimes difficult to understand, but they're certainly interesting and thought-provoking. So when I heard that she wrote a novel and she published it, I was very excited to read it. And uh, it tells the story of a woman who's 40 years old and she has this very active imaginary life and uh, as she has a hilarious, hilarious relationship with a psychiatrist and all these very interesting things happen. Now, halfway through the novel, I started to think that maybe this is uh, the female version of a fight club because there's women on women violence. It's very interesting. True to Miranda July's uh, movies, there are many things that are very peculiar, metaphorical. Sometimes there are bits that are difficult to understand. You kind of have to pause and think about it. However, it's a very interesting novel about the inner lives of women, our secret desires, the things we want and how we present ourselves to the outside world. So very much a worthy novel on any reading list. Next we're going to be talking about The Betty Davis Club by Jane Lotter. And this is another hilarious, funny, amusing novel. It tells uh, the story of a 50-year-old woman who is hired by her sister to take a car and search for her niece who had eloped or escaped on her wedding night. And so as she goes on this trip and she's uh, traveling from one place to the next looking for this young woman, she begins to rethink and reconstruct her life. And, and this is a woman who has made many, many bad choices in her life. Uh, uh, so she is having a very delayed adulting. Uh, basically, instead of taking control over her life 
she, uh, in her 20s, she is beginning to do it in her 50s. So I guess it's better late than never. Uh, and she, she's, she begins to remember all the bad, very bad decisions she has made. She's coming to terms with her, some of her destructive habits and the very negative patterns that she has developed in her life. And she begins to rebuild her life and, uh, and take hold and take control of her life. Uh, at this late stage, and at this late stage, so I mean, you, I think, well, that sounds very negative and maybe a bit depressing, but it's written in a funny and hilarious way. It's entertaining. This novel is gripping. Like you start reading it, and you just can't stop. You just can't wait to find out what happens next. What happens next? It's very gripping. It grabs your attention and then doesn't leave it. So it's a uh, book that I enjoy a lot and hopefully you will enjoy it as well. Next, uh, I'm going to recommend Today Will Be Different by Maria Semple. Uh, this novel spans one whole day and in this one day from morning until the end, uh, the central character deconstructs her whole life. So this is a woman who's married, she has a child, she has made certain decisions in her life, she's remembering her past employment, she's remembering her childhood, and she is coming to terms with uh, all, the all the things that have happened in her life. And, and she's realizing some of the mistakes she has made, but she's also realizing some of the fantastic and brilliant things she has made. Uh, this book is funny, it's inspiring, it's a brilliant read. Um, uh, every sentence is right in its place. Uh, it's, it's really a fantastic and inspiring novel. And finally, I'm going to recommend The Last Girl by Nadia Murad. Nadia Murad is a member of the Yazidi community in, uh, in the north of, north of Iraq. And uh, this is a biography, so it tells the true story of the events that happened to her. It starts with her living in a small town uh, north of Iraq, and then ISIS arrives, and her whole life falls apart, her family life falls apart, or all her dreams and aspirations are dashed. Many painful and difficult things happen to her. Uh, and yet it is a story of survival, of enduring many painful and uh, difficult things. And today Nadia Murad is an uh, advocate for Yazidi rights. Uh, she has won a Nobel Peace Prize for all her work. Uh, so, on one hand, there are parts of this book that are very painful, very dif difficult, because it uh, talks about violence, murder, uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, but yet it shows us how the human spirit can survive and turn all these bad events into very positive things. So this is it. What did you think of my list? What would you add to it? Let me know. Uh, I would love to hear your feedback. And as always, the very best way to stay in touch with me is join my mailing list. Go to my website, ihath.com, and look for the link that says free ebook. And everyone who joins my mailing list receives a free ebook. See you on the other side. Bye.